Hi everybody. I received some more feedback with the question if I could add some context for people who are not very familiar with building airplanes. I'll start the video with a let's say overview. In the left top you can see uh, where I'm working on. So I'm working on the virtual stabilizer. This is the green part. It's part of the empennage kit of the RV7. In the background you can see an exploded ISO view of the vertical stabilizer. And as you can see, there are not that many parts. It's quite simple to assemble. Today it's prime time, which means I'm going to prime all the parts. However, before I can prime the parts, I have to clean them with a special degreaser. This way the etching prime will stick better to the L-clad aluminium. The nice part of cleaning all the ribs and skin is that you can do it while sitting down. Uh, a lot of time you have to stand up but now I can uh, sit on my stool which is uh, very handy and very convenient. Many people use scotch bright pads before priming. However I found with some tests that I can just degrease very carefully and then the prime will stick to the L-clad aluminium very well. Using the paint spray gun is not very easy. However, I'm satisfied with the results. Now that all the parts are primed, I can start with assembling. First, I assemble the rear spar doubler to the rear spar, including the rudder hinge brackets. As you can see, I use the Clicos again to first assemble everything. I'll regularly check the drawings because specifically the rear spar needs a lot of different rivets. So that makes it complex. If you make a mistake there you have to drill it out. I made a mistake twice so you will probably see me drill out some uh, some rivets. I use the pneumatic squeezer for riveting. This is much much easier than using the uh, rivet gun. The bottom part of the rear spar needs flush rivets because it needs to be attached later to the fuselage. Uh, all the other rivets can be uh, normal rivets. Here you can see I have to drill something out. I wasn't satisfied, satisfied with that setting. Better. Continue to squeeze all the rivets, regularly checking if they are valid. So there is a specific rivet gauge that you can use to see if your rivets are set correctly. The rear spar doubler gives the, uh, the spar more strength. This is uh, very important because on the vertical stabilizer, on the hinge brackets, uh, you attach the rudder and of course it needs to be uh, very rigid. Okay, the last part, the top hinge brackets. And after the rear spar, I can start with attaching all the ribs to the front spar. The front spar doesn't have a doubler because that's not necessary. So now I can start with adding all the ribs. The bottom rib is very hard because the squeezer could not could not reach it. So I had to find another way. So unfortunately I had to use the rivet gun. But even that was, was very hard to reach the, the rivets. So it took me some time to um, correct these. 
And again, of course, I screwed up, so I had to drill out one of those rivets. The hardest part is actually places that are hard to use, are hard to reach. That's hard. As you can see, the other rips, uh, they will go very easy because there's enough room for you to work. Here with the bottom uh, rips, that, that is really hard. It takes a lot of time. See there, I can just use a squeezer, which is much, easy, much easier. Top rip, just two rivets. Okay, now that we have uh, assembled both the rear spar and the front spar, I can now uh, put the front spar into the skin and start assembling it to, to the skin. I have to be careful because I don't want to damage the skin. It's very easily damaged because it's very, very thin. So you have to be careful there. Of course, skin is uh, it's very deep, so you have to do everything by hand with the rivet gun. There is no way you can reach that with a squeezer. So all rivets have to be flush and set by hand with the rivet gun and a bucking bar. So bucking bar, uh, in my left hand, I hold a bucking bar, which is a piece of titanium. And um, you can set the rivets with that together with the rivet gun. So this is the second day I work on the vertical stabilizer and it's already almost finished so I'm very confident that next time I can f finish the vertical stabilizer. Which will be nice because that it's actually uh, yeah, quite an accomplishment. I have to think about starting to order the wings because there's an eight week lead time on wings and after the vertical stabilizer I only need to do the rudder and elevators. Today I worked for five hours, set about 115 rivets, had to drill out two which makes a total of 774 rivets for the empennage. On the block, I keep the statistics 